today we talk about the Terminator. This is definitely one of the earliest memories I ever have of anything. Um, I just remember being like this little kid and I was switching these uh, channels because they used to have like the TVs with the, the dial that you would go from UHF to VHF and whatnot. And I remember changing it to channel two. And back in the day, pay-per-view used to be dedicated to channel two. And when you weren't watching a pay-per-view movie, you were seeing trailers for movies that were being put on pay-per-view. And one of those movies was The Terminator. And I remember seeing these trailers over and over again, not wanting to switch the channels to anything else, just being fixed on this Terminator trailer and just keep watching it over and over and over and just being intrigued, fascinated and kind of scared at the same time from the images and I just knew that one day I was gonna watch this movie I'd say about a year or so later uh, the movie finally drops on HBO and from the beginning of the film to the end my eyes were glued I could not look away from this film at all seeing the nuclear nightmare you know, you hear the crying in the background, seeing people hunting for food, you know, only to find like rats and whatnot, to seeing an infiltrator get inside that to whatever shanty town they have left and just mowing them down, mowing down the dogs. And then you see like a silhouette of this Terminator in the background with his, his eyes, just nothing but those red eyes and that huge laser cannon just going off seeing the terminator himself you know as he rolls down a bunch of cops at a, in a police station to see him rip the eyeball out and, and to reveal that there's a red eye there that he's just more than just uh flesh he's that there's a robot inside this to seeing him rip open his arm to to play with the gears to loosen up whatever is uh, obstructing his uh, hand movements. One thing that stuck out the most though of that movie was the very end with the uh, the endoskeleton chasing Sarah and Reese through that uh, through that uh, factory. And just, I just remember being scared out of my mind, but yet at the same time, I cannot look away. I just had to keep watching this movie. And I noticed after watching that and uh, watching all the other movies, I feel like The Terminator was like the only film in that series that was a straight up slasher movie. It's that one thing I think that makes the Terminator film the, the biggest standout is that element of fear. You were, you were scared watching The Terminator because you're seeing that future war, you're seeing how The Terminator just keeps coming and coming and at the very end where you just he's just an unstoppable machine and it's like that horror element has not been duplicated i mean it was a little bit in part two with the t-1000 but just i wasn't as afraid of the t-1000 as i was of the original t-800 i don't know something about that T-800 chasing me is much more frightening than, uh, than the T-1000. Now that's not to discredit Terminator 2 Judgment Day, because that movie is amazing. I still remember watching that on opening day with my father. T-2 was definitely a popcorn action flick, and it had, everything was just, everything just up the ante from, uh, watching the future battle to seeing the T-800 uh, battle the T-1000 in the shopping mall, 
to seeing all those amazing effects that still hold up. I once sat my daughter down to watch T2 with me. And after viewing it, she was like, no wonder people like this movie. And I can't believe these effects still hold up. I mean, this movie came out in the 90s and the effects still look better than some of the effects movies that I've seen today. Like, in some scenes in T2, you can't tell if they used uh, CG or they used practical effects. As opposed to big budget Marvel films, you can tell right away what's being used as a, a digital effect, which is pretty much 90% of the movie. Every scene in T2 was definitely memorable from the battle in the shopping mall to the future war, to breaking out Sarah Connor, to the iron works at the end of the film, uh, to finding out how uh, Skynet was built and how they were able to stop uh, Judgment Day from happening. T2 really ups the ante when it comes to talking about one possible future being very realistic uh, as far as nuclear war is concerned. Um, that threat is there and it, until the end of our existence it's always going to be over our heads. That threat is the ongoing theme of the Terminator films, the first, well the first two, uh, mainly the second one, which is why we see the nuclear nightmare scene where you see like all the all the, the families, you know, the children and all, all being burnt up and flying apart like leaves and watching our whole world just crumble before Sarah herself gets obliterated. So take all those themes I just said before, pick them up and chuck them right out the window. And what do you get? T3. Yeah, Rise of the Machines. Right at the beginning of the movie where the T850 finds John Connor and John Connor says, hey man, you shouldn't exist. You know, we stopped Judgment Day. And the T850 turns around and says, you only postponed it. Judgment Day is inevitable. That just like completely destroys all the credibility that T2 had in, in closing the book on Judgment Day. It's like they couldn't come up with a different reason. And they finally try to address it in uh, Dark Fate by saying, look, if it wasn't gonna be one rogue AI, it was gonna be a different rogue AI. Now, that does make sense. No one man is an island. I mean, if Dyson wasn't gonna make a Skynet, then somebody else would definitely make a Skynet. That makes sense. So I, I can't hate on Dark Fate for that. And as I mentioned before, you know, T1 gives us a really good picture of what the future could hold for us. Just worried about your health. Imagine living in that kind of world. There's no doctor, you know, there's no way to get checkups, you know, to see if everything's okay. You're not immunized, so who knows, you know, maybe anti-vaxxers would love this world, but guys like me, no, we wouldn't love it. So we said all that about that world, you know? It's a scary place. And then they try to translate all that into Terminator Salvation. I admire the film for what it's trying to be. It's trying to be its own thing. It's trying to tell its own story and be different than the other Terminator films. What it didn't do was it didn't scare me. They had their own base of operations and they weren't hiding or starving. It looked like everybody was just fine. Feel like you'd be a little bit safer in their version of the future than you would in the future of the first Terminator film. In retrospect, Terminator Salvation is probably one of the better uh, Terminator movies. It's much better than Terminator Genesis. And the less we talk about that movie, the better off we'll all be. No, you don't want to see the footage. No, no, seriously, you don't want to see any footage. No, stop asking. Okay, moving forward. So we move on to Dark Fate. One thing that they were getting right was the levels of extinction. They were talking about destroying uh, the world's infrastructure. Then the, of course the other level, starvation. Those are realistic things that could happen too. You know, and again, it doesn't need to be a rogue AI to do it. It could just be some very angry foreign country. It shows a little bit, it gives us little glimpses of our future and whatnot, but it doesn't really show people starving or people you know, killing each other over food or anything like that. It doesn't really put that level of fear into us. And, and without that level of fear, without showing us anything, we can't 
relate to the character. See, we come to watch a movie. We come to see all the events unfold. I want to see how her parents were murdered over that can of peaches. I want to see how she was able to grow up and overcome these things and become the badass soldier that she was meant to be. We don't get to see any of that. I would like to see how all those events unfold. I come to I come to watch a movie to see something. So hopefully in the next Terminator films we get to, you know, see more of the future. Do you guys kind of see this headache that I'm starting to induce upon myself here? Yeah. That that headache is what happens when you start to really uh, dive into the uh, whole Terminator rabbit hole. Save yourself some headache, guys. Watch the first two and ignore the rest. Until next time, I'll be back.